So welcome back to another episode of Steve Talks About Night Vision Stuff. In this episode, we're not talking about night vision, we're talking about thermal devices. So this is going to be the start of a new video series that is going to focus primarily on thermal devices. Uh, we'll have a video talking about specs and what to look for, uh, and we'll have probably videos going into each individual device in a little bit more detail. But this is basically the general overview, trying to intro it, um, identifying you know various uh, capabilities of each device, and basically ask, helping you guys figure out which device uh, will best suit your needs. I always believe that you know everyone's requirements and applications are very unique and independent of each other. So rather than just getting you know whatever is popular that's out there right now, you really should be focusing and thinking about how you want to employ thermal. Um, obviously, budgetary constraints, um, but also the capability, the unique capabilities of each of these devices. There is going to be some overlap for some of these, um, but for the most part, you know, each one of these is going to be suited for a different role and you have to kind of evaluate for that. So I'll talk a little bit about um, sort of the naming convention because I know that's confusing. Um, so for infrared, they have, uh, you know, everything's called, you know, like a two letters and then two numbers for the most part. Um, so as an example, this is the ZH38, FH35R, RH35, RH25, MH25, and then the Jerry, which kind of is kind of off and separate on its own with its own naming convention. So the first letter in the name is always going to be the series. Um, so for example, the Z is for the Zoom series. And um, basically that is a unique set of devices that has a, you know, like I said, a very unique rotating uh, dual optical zoom system. F is a finder system. Uh, essentially these are uh, handheld monoculars uh, with like typically with a built-in laser range finder. R is the Rico series. This is basically the top line thermal optics. You t typically are thermal uh, weapon scopes. M is the mini series. And then, like I said, there's Jerry. Uh, the second letter, uh, which is the H or the L, depending on the device, is whether or not it's their high resolution 640 core or their low resolution 320 core. Uh, some of them might be 284 cores, etc., depending on the form factor. But for the most part, it's basically going to be 640 or 320. Uh, we'll go into what the difference is in another video. But essentially, if you're looking for the absolute most flexibility and highest quality image, you always want to get the H uh, if you're on a bit of a budget uh, or if you're going to be primarily operating within sort of the, th the threshold of whatever the natural optical zoom of that device is and the L might be perfectly suited for you as well. And then lastly, uh, the two numbers really represent the size of the objective lens. So for example, this one's a 38 mil lens, 35 mil, 35 mil, 25 mil and 25 mil lens. And why is that important? Uh, the objective lens is going to be the primary determining factor behind detection range. Uh, as well as your natural optical zoom on the device. Uh, so as an example, you know, the 35 mil devices and even the 50 mil devices are gonna give you more of that. So the 50, I think the 50 mil devices gives detection ranges exceeding like two kilometers. Whereas the 25 is gonna be all the, it's gonna be good to like 1.3 kilometers as an example. Uh, so something to keep in mind, um, the bigger the lens you go, the heavier the device and usually the bigger the device. So again, you have to kind of balance capability with size and weight. So I'll start over on the right and kind of work my way left. Um, this is, uh, these two are basically your standard handheld monoculars. And why would, these are not helmet mountable, they're not weapon mountable. Uh, I think some of them, most of these have tripod screws on the bottom. So maybe you guys can make something. But for the most part, these are going to be fairly larger devices. Uh, they're going to have Wi-Fi, um, compass, accelerometers, onboard video, audio, so, uh, some audio, some of them have audio recording as well. Ability to take photos, etc. Um, why do you, why might you want something like this over something that's like, you know, a bit smaller? Uh, for the most part, the controls are going to be a bit more ergonomic. Uh, as you can see, there's a, more buttons, etc., so you can get quicker access to critical functions. Uh, the other thing is these offer larger objective lenses, which mean longer, de longer detection ranges. So, uh, as an example, these both have 35, this is a 35 mil lens, this is a 38 mil lens. So it's going to give you uh, detection ranges over 1800 meters to two kilometers. So the Zoom series has, what I, what I mentioned before, a dual zoom capability. This is the only device uh, that's currently out there that has a capability like this. It's got uh, two focal, um, basically two objective lenses. I'm not sure exactly how they managed to do it, but essentially you turn this and it goes from 19 mil uh, seamlessly to 38 mil. So you can kind of zoom through the range. Uh, why is that important? All thermal devices don't have optical zoom, well, I mean, except for this one. So whenever you're zooming with most optical, so most thermal devices, you're actually using digital zoom. So what that means is like for anyone who's used uh, like a camera phone, it's almost as if you were, you know, opening up your camera and then using like a pinch to zoom. It's kind of similar to like to that, 
but you'll obviously picked up on the fact that when you are doing digital zoom, the image starts to break down because there's only so many uh, pixels that you can really magnify on. So that's another reason, for example, if you're looking to do some more long range work, you mu you're going to want to get something that's these higher resolution 640 core because it has four times the resolution as a 320 core. What this device over here has a, has a laser range finder as well. So if you're looking to do like spotting, for example, and that's all you need to do, this is a good option to look at. Um, invisible laser, laser range finder. Um, moving on to the, uh, the Rico series of scopes. This is a dedicated weapon mounted scope. Um, the R Rico series is basically their top end thermal line. So it has all the bells and whistles. It has like onboard Wi-Fi. It has, um, you know, the ability to attach a laser range finder on the side. It takes offboard power. has a proprietary lithium ion battery. Good for about four to six hours. Comes with two batteries. Um, you can do photos and videos. Uh, adjustable diopter, adjustable focus, uh, comes with a quick detached mount as well. Um, so, you know, the thing to take away from this dedicated thermal weapon scope is that it, this is going to sit on your rifle, right? So uh, think about whether or not you want to have a dedicated primary weapon system with a dedicated thermal scope. And if you do, this is the one to, the, these series of scopes is the one to get. Um, the reason why I say that is because there are uh, clip-on options as well, and I'll kind of get into that in a sec. This is the RH35, so like I said before, 35mm lens, H for the 640 resolution core. So this is going to be this, the, the little brother to the RH50, which is a 50mm lens um, with a little bit more detection and capability as well as optical zoom capability. Uh, maybe I'll pause there for a second, just talk about, about optical zoom and what that means. Um, most of these devices really, with the exception of the uh, F8, for the, with the exception of the ZH38, most thermal devices on the, out on the market right now have fixed um, optical zoom. And what I mean by that is you're not, you, there's no there's no prism system inside the device to allow you to do kind of like, you know, do a throw lever and, and zoom in, like let's say like a low power variable optic from like one to eight X. Um, whatever lens comes on board with these is kind of the zoom level that you get. Um, so any zooming that is done is usually done digitally. Um, what that means is so for people who obviously, you know, you guys are using cell phones, it's basically like zooming into an image when you are, you know, shooting a video. So anytime you do that, you'll notice that the, um, you know, the image starts to degrade a little bit depending on how much you zoom in. Uh, so it's going to be like that for, for these, all of these devices. And that is another reason why 640 cores are usually better than 320 cores because of the fact that it has four times the resolution for you to zoom in on. So for a device like the Rico, the, you know, all of these devices, when you start doing digital zoom, the images break down less. So you can actually go up to 4X on each of these devices and still have a usable image. Whereas we found that with the 320 cores, if you get past 3X, it starts to look a little bit muddy. Um, so something to think about. So moving on to um, sort of the smaller head mounted systems over on the, the left hand side, these are going to be um, a little bit smaller. The texture range is gonna be a bit small just because of the fact that the device have to be smaller and lighter to make it more comfortable to mount on your head. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about the MH35 versus the Jerry first. Um, so we get a lot of questions like, oh, do I get the MH35 or do I get the Jerry? They're very different devices. Um, the Jerry is something that gives you very rapid thermal detection capability, but it has some limitations. Um, as an example, because of by way of how it works, which means that it just gathers thermal and just projects light through the objective lens. If, you er if you're using this in a high light urban environment, the thermal image is going to get washed out. So something to think about. Um, also with the Jerry, you're not able to zoom in at all because there's no control to actually zoom in. It's just all it does is projects um, thermal signatures onto your night vision. With the MH25, it's a little bit different. You actually are looking through a dedicated thermal screen on the inside and you actually are able to, via this dial, like basically zoom in to the image. So up to, I think up to 8x. Um, so a lot more flexibility there, uh, also adjustable focus, front focus as well. So you can actually really get a really sharp image if you wanted to. Um, so if you're out there and you need to get positive ID on something, MH25 is a very good option. Um, obviously you can handhold this as well and you can head mount it. So there's a bunch of options out there right now. Uh, it comes with a mini rail, two threaded holes at the top here. Uh, you can use the panel bridge with this mini rail adapter, uh, works very well and buddy this up with a PVS-14. So you have like PVS-14 on the left and MH-25 on the right or vice versa, depending on whichever way you, you like to use it. One thing that I we found, and we'll talk more about this on the MH-25 video, is that 
um, we're not able to kind of merge the two images together to get true hybrid thermal, uh, like an overlay that you, similar in a way to what, J, what the Jerry does. So like our brains can't put the two together and you know kind of get a smooth seamless thermal overlay onto a night vision image when we're looking through it. That being said, when we did a demo um, for a, a bunch of people at a recent workshop, quite a lot of people could do it. So again, it's entirely dependent on you. We can't tell you whether or not you can and cannot do it. It's, it's everybody's a little bit different. Um, but with the Pano Bridge, what's nice is that you can actually hook up, you can actually swap it if you wanted to. There's a bit more leeway. There's a bit of panning to help you line the images up. Um, but essentially what we found when we use it is uh, we actually use a night vision and we have this swung up. You can you basically use the night vision to do your general nav. Uh, and then if you need to spot something thermal, we've kind of swing the night vision away and uh, use the thermal. Or sometimes we just have both and we basically, you know, kind of close one eye or tell our brain to kind of ignore the left side, left hand side and focus more on thermal and then do your positive do your positive ID and, and, and you know, uh, identify whatever we need to identify and then we kind of swing it out of the way or we just basically focus on the other eye. So um, the image 25 is going to be much more full featured like I said over the Jerry um, and then kind of shifting gears over here into the RH35 I'm going to save this one last because it's sort of their top line thermal device. Uh, 7075 sorry 6061 T6 aluminum construction this is a four-in-one device so what I mean by that is you can handhold it, you can weapon mount it as its own dedicated thermal scope, so it has built-in reticles. You can use it as a clip-on, um, and obviously you can helmet mount it. Um, so just talking a little bit about the clip-on. Uh, so with this device, you can actually dismount it from the, from the helmet mount, uh, put in the actual weapon mount itself, and you can actually park this in front of a, of a day optic, like a low power variable scope. So why is that good? Um, because for example, if you have a primary weapon system that you're using during the day with a day optic, you don't necessarily want to be having to take your day optic off um, and then put a thermal scope on. So this basically just clips, basically if you have like a continuous top rail, um, you would have the uh, your, day, your day optic and then you would just mount this uh, in front of that. So we'll actually probably put a picture of that up on the screen now for you to see um, essentially what that looks like. So with regards to versatility, um, as I'm sure you guys can probably tell by now, the RH25 kind of does a lot of the things that all of these devices do, uh, but it is going to be a bit more pricey, right? Um, it's a small device, but it's very capable, uh, takes off-board power, uses 18, 18650 batteries, has onboard um, photo and video recording, Wi-Fi, all the bells and whistles, like I said. That's all we have for now, guys. Uh, as I said before, this is a general overview, just to talk about the high-level points of each of these devices and get you guys thinking about which one you might potentially be looking at. We'll go into each one of these in more detail, uh, as well as, like I said, we're going to do a video, separate video, just talking a bit more in depth about specs and whatnot. Hope that was helpful, guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos, and we'll see you on the next one.